backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, it's been a year that I've been on Solid Rock Radio. Thank you all for your love and support and all the kindness you've shown. It's been quite the journey so far, but let's keep going. There'll be a lot more to come. Tonight's guest is Aaron Watkins from Random Hero, a band I've spent a lot of time with offstage. Let's get right to the interview. Aaron Watkins of Random Hero. <laughs> Waddy McWatkins. That's right. It's been far too long. And I recently moved to South Carolina, so I'm way closer to you. I know. Well, we'll have to find out a way to get together sometime. I know. It. I want to well, take my kids uh, where you took us. What was that where The Walking Dead? Yeah, where the TV show Walking Dead is filmed. Yeah, it's, uh, well, most people call it Sonoya, but it's Sonoy. Sonoy. Yeah. Sonoy. <laughs> yeah still there you better hurry up before they finish the season and they start dismantling it i know so there have been a lot of big changes going on with random hero so many changes it's been a year it's like strange weird sort of season wonderful <laughs> season that's turned into some really great things you know so okay. i mean i can't really complain that hard okay <laughs> Well, I hadn't seen a lot on social media, so I had to find out what's happening with Random Hero. Yeah. Who is Random Hero? So two members still in the band. It's myself and Los. And yes, we are still a band. We just are taking some time to figure out what this life looks like right now. And mm-hmm. um, I know that everybody's jumping in and starting a tour now. And obviously we have the itch, too. And, you know, we've chatted about it and we've talked to other musicians who, who are willing to go out and play these shows with us. But we really feel like right now we're in a season of just serving our families and what that entails, I'm I'm not really sure. And, and honestly, we've been touring for 10 years and going hard, extremely hard for 10 years. And, you know, the, the beautiful thing about COVID, even though COVID was just huge, monumental um, crisis going on and pretty terrible for a lot of people. And um, for us, the the blessing that came out of it was the ability to be home mm-hmm. and serve our families in a capacity that we've really not been able to do for the last 10 years and that's been wonderful you know just really getting to just be and spend time with our kids and not have to worry about you know what tour is coming up and how long we're going to be gone and then how long we're going to be home and then how long you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. there was so much of that going on i still remember a year where we were just going so hard from early 2017 to late 2018 and we were only home for 50 days that really does take a toll on you and it takes a toll on your relationships and your family and i think if anything covid has taught us that music is important and the ministry we have is important but the ministry we have to our families is the most important. That's kind of the season we're in right now. And, uh, you know, I moved out to South Carolina and then Rob followed not long after and they just bought a house. So they're getting ready to move. And so we're we're kind of just in a season of just being still and, and waiting and um, seeing what God brings to the table right now. And as far as Random Hero is concerned, we will get back to it. It's just a matter of time right now. For those who don't know your relationship, tell people who Los is to you. And we're talking Rob Los McDonough. So he's the bass player in Random Hero, and he's actually my brother-in-law. So he's married to my sister, and they've been married for 20 years. It's been a long time. So, And he's not that old. You know, they got married when they were really, really young, and they're just doing the dang thing, which is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw a picture, I think a wedding picture at one point, and he does look like a little teenager, like he's going yeah. to the prom or something. <laughs> It cracks me up, those old photos where he has no beard and it's just like this this gangly, skinny kid who's just doing life and enjoying it. And now he's just like, he's like beefy with a beard and he does his thing. And I'm like, good for you, buddy. I could never rock a beard that hard. And, and he's done it. So he does own it. <laughs> he owns it. Yeah, he does. He really does. Like he's always telling me, you need to grow a beard. And I'm like, you need to shave your beard. And he's like, no, you need to grow it. And I'm like, well, it gets to a certain point for me where it's just so itchy. I just can't handle it. I'm like, nah, my face wasn't made to, to itch this much, you know. <laughs> How long has Random Hero been around and what's a little bit of the history of it and when did you join? So Random Hero basically started back in 2007 and I joined in May of 2007. At the time we had a whole crew of different human beings and we we're all doing life together and 
trying to figure out what this music thing really was. And I had been touring in other bands previous to Random Hero. So I'd been touring since I got out of high school, since 2000. So that really kind of dates me. So I'm at least 21 years old to the kids <laughs> that are watching this. <laughs> but uh, people doing math real hard right like, now. They're like, oh, how old is this guy? Uh, <laughs> no, so I was touring with other bands. I felt like God was calling me off the road because there, there does come a point where you just feel like it, you know, it can get a little lonely at times. And I went back to school and finished my bachelor's of science degree and started working in counseling. And then I felt this calling on my heart that God was like, all right, it's time to get back into it. And so I was like, all right, you're batter up, dude. If you want this to happen, just bring it my way. So then Random Hero came along and um, Bertrand was in the band and a couple other guys. And then um, Rob was playing the bass at church and our current bass player had stepped away. And so we asked Rob to fill in and talk about something magical is like, you know, Rob's a pretty quiet and reserved human being. And mm -hmm. his first show, I was nervous because I was like, I know, I know he's super quiet. And I'm not sure this is, I'm not sure this is going to work. And then he gets on stage, he's got these goggles on and he's just like decked out and he just goes hard. I remember watching him on that first show, just like in awe of like, who is who this guy? <laughs> like, what have you done with the Rob that I know? And Los became a thing and it just, he's let it take off from there. And then years later we met Patrick and, um, you know, Patrick and Bertrand have stepped away from the band. God always has a different plan for everybody. And, you know, there's seasons for things and, um, Patrick's playing with his wife now. And, um, I think he's got a solo project coming out, mm -hmm. which is rad. And Bertrand's doing life with his family. And I believe he's working on music and, you know, so, here we are. COVID happened and it took a toll on everybody, unfortunately. But, you know, we're still here and we're still ready to rock. And it just is a right now it's a matter of time until God says go, then we're going to be where we are for the foreseeable future. But that being said, as the band as a whole, what we're going to be doing is going and doing co-writes and releasing new music. Um, I don't know that I'm in a position personally in my life where I want to do like six to 10 week tours ever again. It's, it's a lot of time away from my family and I absolutely adore my family. They're my world. So it's like, you know, um, if I can create, I'm going to create and Rob and I will create and we will probably do shows here and there and if the tour makes sense then we'll do it okay sounds good well i know bertrand just had surgery on his back finally to fix the injury he had a previous injury and then he had that stage fall that was yeah. devastating pretty gnarly uh, broke his arm and uh, also re-injured his back so uh wishing him well i've actually texted with him a couple of times and nice. uh, he's working through the the after surgery pain and hopefully yeah. that'll work out well for him yeah same i hope he heals up quick and is able to have all the mobility and, and everything Everything that he's not been able to have for the longest time. So. You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Our performance service family is a Solid Rock Radio business ministry partner who offers turnkey e-commerce website design, marketing, and converged technology consulting. Online at outperformancemarketing.com. What's up? This is Aaron from Random Hero, and you're listening to Solid Rock Radio. What's the best musical advice anybody's ever given you? Ooh, that's good. Ooh, um, I have two things. Mm -hmm. One came from the legend that is Scoop Roberts. So we had been touring and he said, listen, it's a ministry, but you guys have to remember your business at the same time. And he said, you have to put a price on your head or you will always be worth nothing. And I was like, wow. And he mm -hmm. was like, remember that when you go forward. He's like, it is a business. It's a ministry as well, but you also have to pay the bills and you have to be able to take care of what you need to take care of. And he's like, and the only way you can do that is if you put a price on your head. And I was like, all right. So that was some really great advice from Scoop. Honestly, something that I had really never thought of. You know, being in a ministry situation, we always trusted God with everything. Like we went through promoters not wanting to pay to, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff. But God always provided. So that was the thing. So then it was finally like, all right, when time came, it was like, let's let's do this. And I think a lot of people looked at it and respected it as like, you have to put a price on your head because you were worth something to them. Yeah. You were providing a service. It was a big key in us continuing forward. The second one came from Randy from Red. I mean, we were on tour with them at the time. We were having a conversation and we were just chit-chatting about what we're going to do like next steps. And I was like, hey, Randy, what would you do if you were in our shoes? And he said, honestly, what I would do if I were you, I would invest into what you're doing and promote yourself 
myself as a headline. We went out and we got pyro, pyrotechnics, and that upped our game and upped our stage presence and upped everything for us and allowed us to promote ourselves as a headliner. And I was like, dang, that makes so much sense. So we started using our cryo a lot more and getting to the place where we could start promoting ourselves as a headliner. And, you know, those were two really good key pieces of information that I was given that really, you know, kind of struck a chord with me that it was like, oh, I never, I never thought about it. Like you can be really great live, but when you are touring and you're playing shows, first of all, like putting a price on your head is one thing. But the second thing is people are coming to experience what the band is and they want the lights, they want the smoke, they want the cryo, they want the pyro, they want these things that are like, wow, that was insane. That makes them just kind of like jaw on the floor and it just makes them go that much harder. So those are important pieces for us. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how good you are rocking a crowd and how tight you are as a band. You can go out there and put on a great show with nothing. But at the end of the day, the things that complement what you're doing will then up your game. So I was like, that makes so much sense. Is that like a head game thing? It's like you look at things from a completely different perspective. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It was, I mean, it was more of like a, my thought process around it was different. Like I wanted to, like, I didn't want to just be the band that went out and set up shop on a patio and we just played. You know, I wanted to be able to offer people something different and mm -hmm. Um, bring to the table something that that was truly memorable for them. And I mean, everybody that was in the band, they always did things that were incredibly memorable. But when we would pop off our, our cryo or whatever, it was those things that just stuck with people that were like they accented the song. And it was like, this is amazing. And that's what people remember, those key features that the mm -hmm. performers bring and the visual aid bring to the to the show. So, yeah, it was definitely it's definitely a lot of thought provoking, like what can we do differently? Yeah. Next level. Yeah, definitely. So what's the biggest challenge you've ever taken on? Um, raising kids. <laughs> Amen, brother. Um, as far as the band, um, I think the biggest challenge, hands down, it was what I loved about it. We were all just sort of intrinsically very competitive by nature. Like we're all athletes and you know, we just happen to be musicians, too. But we brought that competitive nature to what we did in, in all things. So we could try to do it with excellence. And even though we would fall on our faces multiple times, it was at least the effort that we put into it. But Joseph Rojas, our label president, he was sitting with us and we were and talking about the next record, which became Tension. And he sat us down and he was like, listen, guys, I love you. But I just don't think that you can put out anything better than you've already done. And like Patty and Los and I kind of looked at each other they're like you just messed up that was the challenge and mm -hmm. joseph rojas knew what he was doing when he did that he saw in us something we didn't and he needed to bring that out of us and so when he said i don't think that you can do anything better than that then we were like okay game on let's go and there wasn't a point to prove or anything really but it was this vengeance of like we can we can always outdo ourselves like there's never like a plateau that you hit that you can't outdo and you can put out a really great record but once that record hit its peak and it's starting to come down, like the next thing you put out will always be looked at as something that was better than the last. But for us, it was we want to do this different. We don't want to just write by ourselves and do the same thing that we've done for years. So we we approach that challenge with a different perspective of we're going to use a co-writer. We're going to have a producer. Um, so we co-wrote with Kellen McGregor and he actually produced and mixed the record. And then we wrote with Josiah Prince. Talk about just like two individuals that really know how to challenge your thinking and your your lyrical thought process and your musical thought process and put things together. Like we would only bring in like 30 second snippets. And when I would play the 30 second snippet that I had been thinking about or or whoever brought whatever to the table, it was like, this is my thought. Here's where I'm thinking with it. And they would like sit and listen to it. They would listen to it again. It was almost as if like they heard the entire song like from a 30 second snippet. And, um, you know, they would challenge us to like, all right, so tomorrow we're right. Just bring in one word that you you are thinking about. Like, let's focus on that and, and why you brought that word. And so, you know, we were, we were thinking about all sorts of different things, like to the point of like we were right, driving to co-writes and I was just looking at like billboards, you know, and I was like, what about <laughs> what about Baconator? You know, and, and it, you know, even got more specific is like, what's an, like an emotion word that you're thinking? And one of the coolest things about that challenge from Joe is that we're very intentional about everything that we wrote and everything that we were thinking about. And I actually got this word from my, one of my pastors at my church at the time. And we were getting ready to go to Nashville and um, they were like, we just want to pray over you. We know this record is, is important. And so my pastor started praying. And this other guy, Clay, he said, the Holy Spirit's telling me to tell you that 
there's a sound coming from the throne room of heaven that only you guys can hear. He said, and if you listen for that sound, it's going to change everything. And I was like, okay. I've told my guys that. And I was like, listen, this is what I was told. I want to be intentional with this. So let's every single night spend time away from each other and just listen. And I would sit in the backyard of Joe's house and just listen. And it was like, all right, God, what are we writing today? And all of a sudden, just opening up the floodgates, I'd start hearing melodies and I'd start hearing lyrics. And it was like, it was such a divine nature thing because I've always heard music in my head, but not in this sort of fashion. And it wasn't large, grand scale things, a very simple couple chorded things, like a couple verses or, you know, um, hooks or whatever. And, and then I would just record them and we would take them in and just making sure that we listened to the Holy Spirit for this record and the, that we actively took in what Josiah and Kellen and Joseph were telling us and the feedback we were getting. And that was the biggest challenge that we faced. It was like standing at a big, big giant mountain of you can't do this. But at the end of the day, we were like, we will claw, scrape away and climb and run up this mountain however we have to do it the right way and, and listen to the Holy Spirit and for his guidance and that whole thing. So all that to say that that challenge was, was a pretty epic challenge. You stare at the face of three competitive guys and say, you can't do it. It was just like, Joe, you are honestly probably just a business genius. He knew exactly what you're doing. So when you think of the album Tension, you feel pretty satisfied. Yes. I've always loved our records previously, but Tension is, is one of those records from Random Hero that I can just listen to. And I just absolutely love it because it's everything that it was meant to be. And like even vocally for me, it was like bringing out something different and allowing me to sing and try new things instead of being this just like raspy. Let's scream it out. You know what I mean? And like because mm -hmm. as a vocalist, it's the same as like guitars, just guitarists and drummers and bassists. They all want to shine and, and do what they do the best of their ability. But when, when you're a vocalist, you know, there's so much more than singing with a like a little bit of fire and heat on your voice there's like i'm a classically trained singer so you can do some fun things vocally that i've never actually gotten to do and so on this record i got to do those and vocally i was pushed harder than ever to sing on this record and i i loved that and honestly it was the first time i'd ever heard myself sound like myself singing and it actually sounded like me it's my favorite record for sure by far Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. Favorite fan who's flown to Germany with you? <laughs> huh. Let's see. Let's talk about this. Besides my wife, it would have to be the mothership for sure. <laughs> the uh, only fan we've flown with in Germany, and that was honestly one of the Don't funniest, take away from it. <laughs> it was one of the funniest, most memorable experiences. I mean, you get sweet, sweet old Cindy Blankenship. She's riding in an airplane with a bunch Run of boneheads in a band, and... <laughs> Um, experiencing life with us. And what's what's great is, is at all at all the things that happened, the only one to get pulled in by the police was Miss Cindy Blankenship. She got pulled in. It was so funny. And I'm like, we're going to miss our plane. And she's like in there and they're like interrogating her. I was like, I was like knocking on the doors like how much time we got to go. I'm glad you came because if you hadn't brought your iPhone in there, I would have never been able to get the document they wanted. It was so wild and it was pretty funny. I was like, imagine this out of all the chaos that has ensued in this trip to Germany, you get this sweet, innocent Cindy Blankenship walking along and the police are like, come with us. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and then when they were done, you were like, run, we're going to miss our plane. And I'm like, <laughs> me, run. I was yeah. like, you got to pick it up, girl. <laughs> I wish I had a videotape of that. Trying to run. You trying to help me with my luggage and trying to it get It was to so funny. It, it Honestly, was. probably it one of the best blast. trips ever. And, and we had some really good food on that trip and had some great times. And, and like, I still remember when we got to the, the place where they were housing us and there was like a roasting pig. Delicious, too. It was so good. Yeah, everything was wonderful. Oh, and the broad first in the Frankfurt airport we had. Oh, my gosh. And, and you remember that little cup of coffee I had? It had the little handle and you couldn't even like. Put, put your finger, finger in it. it to hold it and it was like you're like you really had to sip it with two hands and that was that was fun because i was running on probably like two hours of sleep and i was like in this world of like i'm so hungry let's go and then what but 
so tired and all I want to do is sleep and I can't because we're our plane leaves soon. I think weren't we there? Weren't we there for like 15 hours? Something ridiculous it's like crazy. that. Yeah, that was uh, the first time I went to Germany for Loud and Proud. And so mm-hmm. um, since I had never traveled really uh, overseas, y'all were nice enough to let me come along with you. Yeah. So, but we That's stopped great. in Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll never do that again, not unless I'm with guys that are six four like you yeah. guys. <laughs> As I yeah. know I was gonna mess with y'all. So not. Whenever I fly now I fly direct. If you think about it, I flew from Atlanta to Texas to meet you guys. Mm-hmm. Then I flew from Texas to Istanbul and from Istanbul to Frankfurt. I was like, yep. when is it going to end? <laughs> yeah. And then they went straight into uh sound checks. It was quite the whirlwind so but you know yeah. what we made the best of it. It was great. Yeah but, so, you know what that's honestly those festivals out there in Germany are my favorite thing to play. I mean if if I could just put music out and just play in Germany and occasionally come and just play, play in, in Germany, US, I totally would. It was like people, the food, the shows, everything is just ridiculous. And it's so amazing. So, well, yeah. I had a time of my life and I appreciate you letting me tag along. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked that you got to go with this. Well, we talked a little bit about the possibility of touring. When do you think y'all might be thinking more along those lines? It's really just a season for us. You know, there's I think God brings every season to the plate. And, I, and we we watched Corns live, their their monumental stream or whatever. My kids love corn. So I was like, all right, I'll buy it. And so we got it and we cranked. I mean, my house was rocking that day and we had my sound bar cranked all the way up. And, you know, when we got done watching that, it was like Rob and I were like, I miss it. Like we miss it like a lot. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't say for certain that it would be like this year, but for sure, probably next year. What are your favorite tour snacks? For me, it was always, if we're talking food for me, it was always Taco Bell because that was like the most healthy fast food you could get and I could eat and hit all of my calories like for like six bucks, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And as far as snacks go, I've always loved the Croix. Um, my favorite is the cucumber and cherry or something like that. And then I've always loved the Trilogy Kombucha, which is really good. It smells like feet, but it's really, really good. Um, <laughs> I bet that's great in the van. Yeah. Um, I know Rob loved beef jerky, corn nuts, Coke, Pepsi, anything, candy. Oh, yeah, they liked Monsters, Red Bulls. He's on this bang kick. It's like a a new. Yeah, my kids uh, do that for the gym. Yeah, yeah. so there's that. And then other foods that I would eat, bar mix. There's these like big containers you can get at Publix here. It's got like rice. I don't know. And one is like wasabi flavored. It's got like wasabi peas in it and pretzels. It's like, I love that kind of stuff. Like anything Mm -hmm. crunchy, I'll probably eat it just because I love chips and I love carbs. And it just helps me work out that much harder so there's that and then um you know red bull light on my end and snickers so there you go you look like you've been working out i have like for the last couple weeks i've been sort of going light so we we go pretty hard out here on the water here in charleston oh yeah uh, we'd actually put the boat on the beach and anchored just to hang out and then i backed her up back out into the water and i grabbed the tube and i was holding on and my wife was driving the boat and and i was like i'll just hold on the tube Let's just go. And so she started driving and I was kind of giving her this like yawning, like, oh, you're being boring. This is boring. And my wife saw that and kind of like, you know, she pulled her sunglasses slowly down to where I could see her eyes. And it was like this like, oh, you're dead. Look. And I was like, oh, boy, she (laughs) pedaled to the metal. And the ride was actually a ton of fun. I had a blast getting whipped around. The ending wasn't super fun. Like she did a circle and I hit a huge wake and did a cartwheel on top of the water and I could feel my side felt funny for like the last two weeks. So I went to the doctor and then I found out that I had a broken rib. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm recovering from that. So I've been working out very lightly. I've worked out really, really hard lately, but just the- like for the last couple of weeks, I've been sort of going light just because I wasn't really sure what was going on. Then I officially finally was like, all right, I need to go to the doctor. So I don't even know I, that it was her fault. Like we were out playing on the water again, like a week ago and we were being rough and wrestling and playing King of the Hill and I'm like getting tackled by everybody. And I think maybe that might have exacerbated what was going on and officially made it just sort of pop out. So, um, yeah. So anyway, don't challenge your wife's husbands. Don't challenge them in a capacity where they can show you who's boss. So she did. And I was like, forever, I will allow you to drive this boat. I won't even touch it unless you're on the back and you're riding on the tube or wakeboarding or whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty great story, though. I mean, she got to show me how she can drive a boat. I was loving it. I was like, this is amazing. And I was also trying to sort of stand up on the tube and like just being stupid. She gave me that look like you're going to learn today. And I learned and the lesson is valuable. And I'll take that into our marriage for forever. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's healing, so I feel good. Okay. Everything's good. Deal. And on that note, I will let you go. You have a great day, and you hopefully too, see you Cindy. out there on the road one day. Love you, girl. Thank you so Love you much too. for the hangs. All right. Bye. All right. See you. Thank you for listening tonight. Stay tuned for more great music all night long. Be sure to check out my I'm With Mothership Facebook page and Solid Rock Radio's website. Follow the link under Shows to Backstage with Mothership, which will have the links to my guests' social media accounts. This show will be replayed at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Past interviews available on podcast.solidrockradio.org, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on Pandora platforms. And remember this week, be kind to one another.